everyone! We're gonna make tuck cakes for Valentine's Day today. I'm trying to do a different angle, so I hope it's working. <laughs> First, we're gonna need flour. Sorry about that. The camera died on me. Anyways, let's get back to business. Got some really nice tea today. With actual rosebuds. Mm. So good. China actually. I need to talk to him about that. I mean, like, how does he get those things? Anyways, so we have our flour and sugar, and we're going to make bleeding heart cupcakes. I love them. They're so cute. Oh, we're gonna need butter. Soda. A little bit of salt. Oops. That should be everything we need to make the cake part. It's a very plain vanilla cake. sugar, trust me. We're going to do half a teaspoon of baking soda. Two eggs. I don't bother with separating. I think it's silly. Teaspoon, full teaspoon of vanilla. Mix that all up before we get too far into this. Oh, why did I bring a chair in here? Mm. It won't be a dough yet, obviously. They kind of start to form crumbles at this point. You obviously need yeah, much more than me. Well, might as well have a little bit of salt while we're at it. Just a sprinkle. And my butter doesn't have measurements on it, so I'm just going to cut this in half and it should be about half a cup. I'm a little impatient, so I'm going to melt it in the microwave, so I can just 
this out into the batter like that. some of this stuff away because we want to have a clean kitchen. Clean kitchen. This also, it still won't be like a batter yet, so I am going to add some milk into this. Because it needs to be nice and liquidy in order to make good cupcakes. I normally go by sight for most of this stuff, which does get on some people's nerves, but I'm not much of a worrier sometimes, all the time. Okay. I do worry, but not right now. I'm not going to worry right now. Right now is not the time. So. Be sure you know this is for Valentine's Day. I love Valentine's Day. It's so much fun. Granny gets nice. You know, he's such a softie. Mm. You can also do this with uh, this store bought cupcake mix. I prefer not to, but you can. Some people prefer it because it does tend to look better. But I'm not so much worried about the looks as the taste. Because as long as it tastes good, then people will eat it. And that's all you want, right? Just gonna get all the lumps out. And as you saw, I only eyeballed because we're just trying to make sure we get the right texture of batter. As long as the batter looks right, it normally comes out pretty good. I'm going to say it's probably like a 70% of the time it comes out good if it looks right. Normally my problem is I forget ingredients. But I'm trying to be extra careful because these are special cupcakes. And I only get to have so much of my special ingredients in the house at a time. Bad real quickly. So if I don't use them, then they kind of make everyone else mad. Especially Al. He gets so mad. It's leftovers. <laughs> That's got to taste really good. The tea tastes really good too. I love the store I go to. They're so cute. Okay, so now we need to pull out our cupcake liners. and just fill this out to 12 and if I have more I have another pan that I can fill out. I actually filled out both of them. And I 
should have plenty of liners for that. I don't think there'll be too many more than just a nice dozen. It's a pretty thick batter, kind of like a uh, pancake batter if you make pancakes from a bag. This is what it kind of looks like when the recipe comes out right, is what this looks like. So I'm going to get, actually I'm going to use one of my measuring cups. I'm going to use the fourth cup one, and I'm just going to measure out the batter. Because you want them to be even. Don't worry if you get little bits on the sides. I mean, like, they'll cook, and normally you can just scrape them off. I am going to worry a little bit right now, and get these out of the way, because I don't want these getting dirty. Like I said, these are just vanilla cakes, so if you want to make this recipe with the box set, just get regular vanilla cake batter and portion them out as cupcakes. I'm feeling these really full, so they're probably going to come out a little bit overflowing. And that's fine, because then you just get really nice tops, and everyone likes muffin tops. Oh, that was bad. That was a bad joke. I got my 12 cupcakes portioned out, and I did get kind of a bit of a mess on my counter. But I can wipe that off real quick with the sponge. In fact, not my counter, that's my stove. So I'm just gonna get my stove out of it with some warm water, wipe it off real quick so that it doesn't cause a problem later. Wash my hands. You can't cook with dirty hands, it's not good. It'll make people sick. And unless you're doing that on purpose, you don't want to. But you shouldn't make people sick on purpose. Yeah. So, throwing things away. Let's see. Our cupcakes are pretty much ready. I'm just going to pop them in the oven. The oven's not preheated all the way, but I'm going to check them once it does so that I can make sure that they don't brown too much because we don't want them to burn. But right now I need to get started on the next part of the cupcakes, which is the glass. So these cupcakes come with broken sugar glass in them. And it's one of my favorite things to do because they're a lot of fun. And people normally like them. Sorry, my pants are all over the place. And I'm trying to find a specific one that I don't think is ready right now. So I'm just going to use this one. So basically, making sugar glass is really simple. You're going to take, I'm going to use a third cup of sugar. And I'm going to Sprinkle it in the pan. Swirl around a little bit, try and get it even. I'm just going to turn the oven on to about medium, or not the oven, stove on to about medium. And I got these really cool silicone mats. So I'm going to pull one out right now. They're really good for making cookies too because you can space them out on the circles. But for sugar glass, I'm going to pour it out on this. And you can also do this for making hard candy. You pour it out, and if you're going to make hard candy, you pull it. But for making glass, you just let it settle and flatten out. And after it dries, you can break it and make shards of glass. So make sure and stir this a little bit. Don't worry if it gets brown. It'll actually start to taste like caramel when it starts turning brown. Just don't let it burn. You can add water to it if you want to make the process easier. Just make sure you cook off all the water, otherwise it'll get really sticky. So I washed my 
crushed my spatula, I'm going to actually use it to stir the sugar while it starts to cook. It'll take a really long time for it to start melting, but once it starts melting, it'll go really fast. So you want to keep an eye on it, because burnt sugar is really hard to get out of pans. It really kind of sucks. If you've ever had to deal with burnt sugar, you probably know. It's almost easier just to get rid of the pan afterwards. But if you soak it in water for a really long time, the sugar tends to come off easier. If you do end up having to rescue a pan, because I know it's really hard to replace them sometimes. I still won't have a replacement nonstick pan. I really should. Calm down. The best piece of advice for cleaning a pan, though, is actually to make sure and do it before it sits for too long. So if you do notice that your sugar is burning, you need to be very careful and take it off the stove and hold the pan away from you and try and get some water in it. As long as it's not on fire or anything, just try and, and it'll be scary obviously, but do your best not to burn the sugar because you'll either ruin your pan or you'll just hurt yourself. So, I'm a little dangerous in the kitchen. Maybe don't do what I do. This is a fireproof spatula. It's probably fine. I'm going to assume it's fine. Normally if it's got a red handle is how you can tell if it's fireproof, but like, it didn't say anything when I got it. <laughs> Maybe I should get one of the wooden ones. I don't know. This, the spatulas that are plastic are a lot easier to get the sugar off of. But, again, soaking anything in water for long enough will basically get it clean. So along the lines of working with sugar, though, uh, one thing that's really fun is to make actual caramels. I don't know if I should just do a video of that. If you want me to do a video about that, you can tell me. I'm sure I'd be fine with doing that. I just have to have a little bit of preparation because it requires ingredients we don't typically have a lot of. Not really. We always have them. It's just I requires ingredients I don't typically get to use. So, that ingredient. I have to ask if I can use heavy whipping cream because it's a little bit more expensive and it's got a lot of fat in it. But that's how you make caramel. Obviously the cupcakes are nowhere near done, but I'm going to put a timer on them for about 10 minutes to check on them later. Remind me to do that. So my sugar is bubbling now, but I'm going to let it go for a little bit longer because it's really cloudy. And I want to try and get nice clear sugar. Said, it just makes it taste like caramel, and that's kind of what I like. But you need to make sure to watch it, especially how it is right now, because it'll crystallize. And but I did add a little water to it, just so you all know, because it is a lot easier like this. Otherwise, you're just standing here, like waiting for sugar to turn. When the sugar starts melting, you'll actually see just a very small amount of melted sugar. It'll quickly start to melt everything though, because it's really just trying to get it up to the heating point of melting, which is absurdly high. So make sure not to touch this, because it will possibly melt the skin off your hand. So yeah, do not touch molten sugar. Um, again. I'm dangerous, so I do, because I make hard candy, but I try and do it in a safe way of using my silicone mats and trying to handle it at a cooler temperature. I have burnt my hands though, so I do know that it is very, very painful, even at cooler temperatures. People who work with sugar for a living have to be like really tough. Their hands probably don't have any feeling in them. 
because it hurts a lot. You can try and bust up the bigger pieces of sugar because that will help it melt faster. have it all melted. You want it all melted, otherwise you'll get really weird crystallization in your final product. So, once we have it all melted, we're going to pour it out. So don't worry if you have some sugar sticking to the sides of your pan. Um, again, it'll all come off if you just soak it for a while and scrub it a bit. Or at least that's how, what works for my house. The pan I'm using right now is stainless steel, but you can probably use anything. I would not recommend I would not recommend using a non-stick pan because especially the ones with the black on them tend to not work very well. Okay, so my sugar is now melted and we're going to pour it all on here. It's not very much, but you don't need a lot for these cupcakes. Because literally plain sugar that you're going to be putting on top. And you want it to be a little bit thin. So, I'm not going to be able to get all of it out, but I did get as much as I can out. I'm just going to take it, I'm going to go like this, and try to move it out to the sides a bigger piece of sugar glass. It's going to start setting up pretty quickly, so don't worry about that. And you see, it's not a very big piece of sugar that we have, but that's fine for what we need. Because literally, having too much of this around, you're just going to end up eating it. And if you have to, you can take, I just had this in the pan, so it's not dirty or anything. So you can take and just spread it out. And you'll notice that you'll actually get little sugar crystals coming off. Basically, that's all just can cotton candy. At this point, this is just cotton candy. Some fairy floss. <laughs> but very sticky. That steam was all from that pan very hot pan right now. It was actually not too bad, so I'm going to fill it with water a bit. And even just with that, a lot of the sugar just came off. Okay, so we had some technical difficulties. My camera went off without me realizing it. So I finished the sugar. It's all broken, as you can see. I have my special ingredient with sugar added. And I have some cream cheese frosting that I made. We're going to put them on the cupcakes, which I put in the fridge for a little bit so that they could cool down. And first thing I need to do is get some scissors. Some little scissors. And cut a hole in the bag of my frosting. So, I'm going to take the frosting and just do a little circle around the cupcake. On each one. So we'll just do these three for now. And I'll show you how I decorate them. I'm going to take a little spoonful of the special ingredient and put it right inside the circle like that. Mm -hmm. A little bit. And last one. And then we're going to take a nice good shard of the sugar glass and stab it right into the cupcake. Mm -hmm. 
That's how you make bleeding heart cupcakes.